Hello and welcome back to BT Murrayfield for the finals of the Girls National Youth Cups 2022. We've got six clubs today playing across four matches and we're going to start in Downhill Stadium for our Shield games. First is our under 16 game between Tayside Girls and Caith Ness. It was perfect weather in our first match of the day at Downhill Stadium. Tayside had come close to scoring in the opening minutes of the game, but Caith Ness managed to get a penalty just metres shy from the try line. The following 10 minutes of the match saw both sides work really hard to make ground as possession switched hands numerous times. But it wasn't long before the first points of the day would be recorded. Winger Caitlin Sandilands made a speedy sprint along the right wing for Tayside before offloading the ball to her teammate Rowan McGugan. Quick thinking from the fullback to offload the ball to Grace Fraser allowed the standoff to dot the ball down for the first score. Some moments later, Tayside added a second. Utilising their strong forward pack, they were able to charge their way along the left-hand wing for Jocelyn Norrie, who had come onto the field to replace her teammate Eva Finney just moments before to cross the whitewash. Neve O'Reilly, the scrum half of the day, added the extras to make it 12-0. Tayside's third came courtesy of Rowan McGugan, who stormed away through the Caith Ness defence for her first score of the day. However, Kate Ness was still more than up for the fight. Utilising offload passes in contact, the girls in green did a fantastic job keeping the ball alive whilst making ground. And with just one minute left in the clock, fullback Lena Munro managed to bag their first try of the game, with captain Taz Munro's adding the extras to bring half time to 17 7. The opening 10 minutes once again saw both teams enjoy strong phases of attack. It was Tayside who would restart the scoring. Rowan McGugan got her second try of the day as she crossed the line to make it 22 7. And it wasn't long after before she capped off her day by getting herself her hat trick and converting her own try to bring the score further away from Keith Ness. Caith Ness were eager to respond and did so with just seven minutes left on the clock. After referee Gordon Glashen awarded Caith Ness a penalty on Tayside's 10 metre line, a quick tap and go with Tasman Rosie found a gap in the Tayside defence to dive across the line. But Tayside were not done. Despite Caith Ness's best efforts to defend their try line, Morag Strang extended Tayside's lead with their sixth try of the game. And McGugan capped off a great performance by scoring her fourth try of the game, going out to the wing before eventually running round to score under the posts to bring the final score to 41-12 to Tayside and sending the under-16 shield back home. Fantastic to see girls at that age develop and grow at rugby and to have some quality of boys rugby as well has been really important. And you can see from them combining with other teams in Tayside, it's fantastic that they've just come together so easily. I think we're all just really, really proud of what we've done. And like we came into this team, we didn't even know, like we weren't even a team six months ago. And Tayside have just come together and we've all made this absolutely amazing team. I think it's absolutely amazing that we've achieved this. And the other team as well, I think it's a really good game, really equal. And so I'm just so proud of everyone. Yeah. 
Congratulations to Tayside girls. Caithness, however, did have another opportunity at Silverware as they took part in the Under-18 Shield, also in Damhill Stadium, where they took on Dundee Rugby. In our second battle of the North versus the Midlands, Dundee took a quick lead in the fifth minute when their scrum on the Caithness 5-metre line allowed their number 8, Sam Taganakuru, to place down. And just moments later, they added to the tool when Ayla Ronald made an outstanding intercept to the ball before making her way across the Caithness whitewash to make it 10-0. Despite lots of admirable defensive effort, just ahead of halftime, Dundee found their third try. Sam Taganaguru got her second just under the post to make an easy conversion for the kicker. Libby Smith added the extras. With the half-time on the clock, Dundee's Izzy Greer made a lightning-fast dash from their 22 to score between the sticks. Smith once again enjoyed a successful conversion as they led 24-0 at half-time. Much like their under-16 counterparts, Caith Ness were far from down and out, as they eagerly looked to make a comeback. And they did! Shannon Pastotti found a gap between Dundee's defence and got the ball over the line for their first two points of the match. And it was time for another. Some ten minutes later, Pastotti was back again across the whitewash for another Caith Ness try, which also went on to convert, narrowing the gap between the two sides to just 12 points. And just two minutes later, the crowd were back on their feet at Downhill Stadium for the second hat-trick of the day, when Passotti backed herself for another try, which she again converted with ease, this time to bring the score to just five points. And Dundee were now really under pressure for the win, and they were eager to extend their lead. Strong teamwork from the Angus side saw them back in their opposition 22, and soon Isla Ronald was making her way towards the try line to score her second of the match. Smith's conversion pulled Dundee ahead to 31 19. Full time drew closer, both sides continued to search for more points. But it was Dundee's Izzy Greer who would claim a final five points and close the game to a full time score of Dundee 36, Caithness 19. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, it was a really competitive game there. Uh, I think we prepared well for it. We had some good training sessions. Uh, we started off really well, got a few points up at half time, uh, flagged a bit at the beginning of the second half, but then came back strong. So, yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, I think, given the conditions, the girls have risen to the occasion, definitely. Oh, it feels really great. Yeah, we're really glad. I mean, we knew it was going to be a hard game, so we just kind of thought we'd just come and play our best, and it was good. It was really good. Definitely. And how proud are you of the team to finally get to the final and to win? So proud. I mean, we've, we're, we're a new team. We've just sort of come together and like hardly know each other. And to sort of play the way we played, it's, it's really great. I'm really proud of everyone. So congratulations to our winners of the Shields, Dundee and Tayside. Unfortunate for Keith Ness. We're now going to turn our attention to the matches that took place out here inside the bowl. As we look at our under-16s cup, where Stirling County made their first appearance of the day as they took on East Lothian Girls. It was a sunny setting for the first match at BT Murrayfield, and after an enthralling, tight opening 10 minutes, Stirling opened the scoring, and after a series of decisive carries, Ella Gibbons making the final charge and giving her side the lead. And Sterling had a second in the 18th minute 
Electric thinking from Charlotte Heath as Sterling were awarded a penalty five metres out, which saw a tap and go before reaching the line before East Lothian could even react. But the momentum began to shift and East Lothian got themselves on the scoreboard on the stroke of half time. The ball was worked over to the left hand corner and fly half and captain Emily Love showing silky footwork to get the ball down. Only five points separated the sides at half time and East Lothian continued their strong fight back in the second. Love soon had her second as well. This time it was raw pace that Shaw shoot down the right wing before coming back onto the posts, dotting down and levelling the scores. The comeback looked complete in the 35th minute as East Lothian took the lead. Another group break from Love gave her side front football and Faye Sutherland split two defenders was an excellent line to run clear. Love nailed the conversion in front of the post to give East Lothian a seven point lead. But Sterling's grit and determination was there for all to see and they soon cut the gap to two points. After winning the ball back in their own 22, it was Ella Crozier whose strength meant that she got halfway through a tackle and brilliantly reached the line getting the ball down at full stretch. And Sterling regained the lead in the 49th minute. It was Neve Robertson Jack who cut back inside the defender, charging through the tackle and scoring. That lead was extended in the 53rd minute as Ella Gibbons' speed and power was on show again as she flew through a gap in the defence and ran over from 15 metres out. And with less than two minutes to go, Sterling County secured the victory. Neve Robertson Jack bagged her second score of the game, breaking the line to more than 30 metres out and splashing over under the posts. Ellie Forsyth landed the conversion to round off the score as a full time. Sterling County 32, East Lothian Girls 17. It's just absolutely amazing. These are a fantastic group of girls to coach. We've worked so hard this season. We've had some, you know, difficult games. We've had some defeats. The way they've come back, the way they've improved, it's just been absolutely amazing to make it here today. And then the result just tops it off. <laughs> just amazing. I'm not, I can't even. I, I can't even speak. It's just brilliant that oh, we've gone so far. I just yeah. I can't yeah. <laughs> After the dust had settled with the Under-16 Cup, it was time for the Under-18 Cup, where Stirling County were looking to make it a double today as they took on Edinburgh Harlequins. It took Stirling less than a minute opening the scoring, as Nicole Flynn found space on the left and was rapid in the pursuit of the line, putting it down under the posts. And Sterling grabbed a second two minutes later as Natalie Roy burst through the last tackle and made it to the line in the right corner. Edinburgh Harlequins managed to find a foothold in the game and they scored in the left corner in the 15th minute when Sky Fimster found a way to the line with great footwork for their first points of the game. Sterling, however, continued to push through and were rewarded in the 20th minute when Tessia Smith brilliantly finished off their third try of the game. A fourth try followed not long after with number eight Maya McDonald producing a beautiful sidestep on her way to scoring in the left corner. And in the 28th minute, Chloe Brown showed great strength to reach the line, despite the attempts of three Harlequins defenders to stop her. The Sterling back three soon all had a try to their name, as Captain Hannah Walker finished off a lovely backs move in the right-hand corner, on the brink of half-time.
Sterling came out for the second half in just as good as form of the first, and Keithy Ainsworth splashed over the line under the post within one minute of returning to the pitch. Maya McDonald scored an excellent second try in the 40th minute as she came flying off the back of a scrum and was too strong to be stopped from 10 metres out. Sterling were relentless in their pursuit of the win and Jessica Orr Ewing found a fantastic score in the left hand corner in the 48th minute, using her footwork to take the advantage of a small gap. Harlequins were certainly not down and out, and they worked hard to push back after a sustained period in the Turling 22. Prop Carly Conn fought off the county defenders to score in the 55th minute. But Sterling hit straight back, and Walker scored a fantastic second try, showing lightning pace down the right-hand side before stepping inside and finishing under the sticks. And with the last play of the game, Nicole Flynn grabbed her second try again showing her pace and footwork to slalom through. It was a valiant performance from Quinns, full of grit, determination, but Sterling proved to be the strongest side today as they leave BT Murrayfield with the Under-18 Cup. Nervous I was, you know, for the first 60 minutes probably, but now really, really proud. It's been a long season, long 18 months, uh, it's been difficult to keep the girls, well, it has been difficult to keep the girls motivated, but they've just proved that today that they're an absolutely fantastic bunch of girls. Um, yeah, so really, really proud. A proud dad <laughs> of, of 20 girls. Absolutely ecstatic just for all the training and stuff to pay off. I think everyone feels it. It's just amazing. Brilliant. And you bagged yourself two tries as well on at BT Murrayfield. What was that like for you? I like this world. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. So congratulations to our winners on what has been a fantastic display of rugby here at BT Murrayfield. Don't forget that we have the highlights of the Boys National Youth Cup Finals coming up very, very shortly. Be sure to look out for that and we hope to see you then. Thank you for watching.